Emergency and Disaster Communications 101. This is Throttle Up Prepper. Emergency and Disaster Communications 101. This is Throttle Up Prep. Uh, how you doing? I am Jeff. Welcome to the program. I am excited to have you. Thank you to all my new subscribers. If you're not yet a subscriber, go ahead and uh, click uh, to subscribe now and make sure you check off that little notification bell so you can get notified every time I put out a video. At this point, every Monday and Thursday at least, and every now and again you get a bonus video. That's why you want the notification bell uh, clicked so you don't miss out on the new stuff. Now listen, uh, also, by the way, make sure you stop by the website, uh, throttleupprepper.com. Uh, I've done a few videos in the past on ham radio, amateur radio, um, and, and, and communications in general. Uh, today, I thought it necessary and thought it a good idea in light of all of the natural disasters and man-made things that may or may not be coming our way. Uh, it may be good for a refresher course for some of you uh, who maybe uh, got your, your tech or other license with the FCC long ago and haven't brushed up on it in a while. Or maybe there's newbies out there uh, to the emergency communications uh, realm. Uh, and maybe you don't realize that in a natural emergency, a cell phone <laughs> could be uh, quite useless. Uh, I think about Puerto Rico right now, post-Hurricane uh, Maria. Uh, and uh, Irma, uh, they got nailed with, with both of them. Um, you know, power's out for most of the island, uh, very little fuel, backup generators struggling to keep the hospitals up and running. I think there's 30 hospitals that have been shut down because they don't have the power. Uh, so whatever amateur radio or emergency radio communications they have uh, for uh, Joe and June citizen, um, you know, probably a long since down. So they're relying on a little HT, little handy talkies, uh, portable uh, communications like these, uh, which is two meter and 440 or 70 centimeter band, uh, VHF and uh, UHF uh, bands or frequencies. Uh, and again, if you're not, uh, not a ham operator, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, to which I would say to you, Look into it. Uh, go to places like uh, ARRL dot org, I believe, and maybe dot com, but I'm pretty sure it's dot org, and get some information on how to get a license. It's super easy. How do I know? I got mine, and I'm not the sharpest tack in the drawer, or whatever that thing is. <laughs> but but listen, one of the things is you you know the great things about this. You know, this is my Baofeng BF F8 HP eight watt. Um, Transceiver. I'm able to receive emergency communications, uh, NOAA weather radio. I can just have conversations and make friends and contacts uh, within a relatively limited area. Much better than an FRS, Family Radio Service, GMRS, uh, or, or MERS, uh, multi-use radio uh, system. Some of these other things that you can buy off the shelf at, you know, the, the, the big box uh uh, stores and, and stores like uh, uh, Dick Sporting Goods or Academy Sports and whatever, um, hunting stores. You can get walkie-talkies that are good for neighborhoods, maybe up to a couple of miles. Something like this, in theory, uh, line of sight, uh, if you have, you know, this is not the antenna it came with. This is the Nagoya, I think, uh, N770. Uh, gives a little better reception and transmission. Uh, and, you know, if you're not blocked by buildings or mountains or other things, if you've got decent line of sight, uh, you know, they claim you can get 30 to 50 miles out of one of these things. I don't know. Uh, I haven't gotten quite that far, but uh, way better than your standard walkie-talkie. And then we've got units like this, the Yaesu FT2900R uh, that I, uh, I bought uh, about a year ago, getting close to that now. Uh, only about maybe 180 bucks, whereas this handheld thing is maybe with the extra accessories, extra batteries, um, um, maybe 80, maybe 
80, 90 dollars. Um, so anyway, so there's a difference in price, but this is a mobile unit. This is intended to be, you know, in your car. Um, I'm using it as a base unit, uh, although if I had to go uh, in an emergency, I could take this out and wire it in uh, to the car battery, no problem. Currently have it uh, into a, a, a unit here that transforms from the, the 110 volt down to 12 volt, uh, so I'm able to use it here in the house. And I have a, a Diamond X50 uh, 2 meter 440 uh, antenna up on the house. I happen to be at about 1,100 uh, feet above sea level. Uh, again, this is only about 8 watts, although realistically you're going to get about 5 watts of power out of this. This I have at the lowest setting of 5 watts. Now it goes up to 75 watts. Why am I telling you all this? Why am I drowning you with information? Here's why. A lot of 2 meter, what you're going to get uh, are through repeaters. Uh, th those are basically little stations. Uh, if you will, that are located in various areas that listen for communications from little guys like this. And then what it does is it rebroadcasts, uh, retransmits, if you will, your signal so people can pick it up at a far farther distance. I may be about 30 to 50, yeah, probably 30 to 40 miles away from one of my favorite repeaters that's on top of a mountain that's only about 600 feet above sea level. So it's actually at a lower uh, elevation that I'm at and on 10 watts 5 watts I can connect with it um, but at 10 watts they say I come in pretty crystal clear and from that I'm able to talk to people I'm here in Western North Carolina uh, I talk to people in South Carolina all over North Carolina Tennessee Virginia it's pretty sweet for a regional communication solution even though technically uh, two meters probably more looked at as a as a local uh, communication but again with the right setup the right topography the right equipment uh in line of sight etc you can get much better out of it so uh in the description you can check i'm going to put uh three of the most common uh, also known as my favorite uh simplex uh channels uh what's a simplex it's just an open frequency where radio to radio uh, can communicate without having to go through a repeater. Uh, so in other words, if the power's out long term and backup generators aren't running and you can't get to somebody through a repeater, plus there's things like tones and codes and things you got to program into these things. You can't just tap into them. Uh, especially if you're a newbie and you haven't quite figured everything out yet, you need to know the simplex stations and have them uh, in. Now granted, I'm down in my basement the radios are close together, even though the antenna is, you know, 33 feet up on a, a mast on top of my roof. Um, but just using minimal things, and I'm going to edit the audio here so you don't hear all my call sign. I don't want anybody harassing me. But it, it's just, you know, real basic, you know, here we go. Okay. I don't have the volume up. See? And you can hear me. Check, check, check. And likewise, even a little crappy unit like this, comparatively speaking, uh, from a basement communicating with the tower, I can KN and just like that, you can see uh, it works. Test, 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 and we're clear. So a little feedback, but you get the idea. So if you had a friend that's you know maybe 20 miles away. 15 miles away, part of your prepper group that you need to make sure you can be in contact with. You've got to have these frequencies already programmed in because you're not going to remember in like, you know, just like I was just talking on uh, frequency 146.520. It just, you might, you might not. No, <laughs> I know I'm not. Uh, so have these things programmed in. Keep a note with you somewhere, you know, in your wallet or whatever uh, that, you know, you're going to have on it. Let me kill the squelch here and the volume. And uh, essentially make it so that you have a means. If cell towers are down, if, if you don't have repeater access, uh, you have these frequencies ready to go. There's also, you can research uh, some of the more common frequencies for FRS, uh, MERS, and uh, GMRS uh, as a tech class. Um, uh, you know, $10, uh, my license costs are 15 10 or $15. It's good for 10 years. It's crazy. 
Um, don't know why you wouldn't want to do it. Um, unless you're one of those, oh my gosh, the government's going to know who I am and where I am. Well, guess what? If you've got a driver's license, state ID, uh, you have a cell phone, they know who you are and where you are anyway. So I, I don't get that whole thing. But, but find those common frequencies. If you've got friends that have walkie-talkies, um, you know, and you know, know what their frequencies are that they operate on, you can communicate with them with uh, e either one of these radios in the two meter frequency uh, bands, rather. Um, highly recommend it. Um, and remember, in the event of an emergency or disaster where life uh, is at stake, technically, if you knew how to use one of these, you could if you didn't have a license. Uh, but again, likelihood of you figuring out how to do it, uh, pretty slim. So skip all the gray areas, skip all the, you know, potential problems that you could cause for yourself and others. Go get the license. Just a couple of dollars, uh, good for a decade, and you get the training you need uh, so that you could possibly uh, be able to assist in saving lives. Of course, yours and your families, your neighbors, and people in your prepper group. Uh, again, check the description. I'll put my top three favorite frequencies in the two meter band uh, that are used for simplex. It's radio to radio communications. Listen, it is time for all of us to prepare for whatever comes our way. If you're not yet a subscriber, again, please subscribe now. I hope this information was helpful and useful and even moderately interesting or entertaining. Yeah, if so, please uh, make sure you like this video, uh, share it with a friend. Uh, get your certification, and until next time, God bless and be safe.